are in for a total treat because I am here with some very special people from Metrolina Greenhouses. They're actually the growers who supply a lot of the big box stores and nurseries that we buy our plants from. So I am here with Dr. Mark. Dr. Mark, you want to tell us what you do for Metrolina? I'm the director of research here. The director of research and Mariah Holland, who is the director of marketing, and they are going to give us a behind the scenes tour of what goes on here. So we are standing actually at the crossroads of their, what this is called, this gorgeous <laughs> area, which is called the test garden. Yes, the test garden. And behind us, you can see the actual indoor greenhouse where everything is grown. So what I'd love to know is a little bit of the history of Metrolina and how it became this enormous operation that it is today. All right, um, so Tom and Vicki Van Wingerden, they came over from Holland. 1971 and started a greenhouse, uh, moved to the Charlotte area and wanted to start a greenhouse and okay. their goal was to be 10 acres um, and now today we're 167 <laughs> acres under glass and um, so we've just grown over the year so it just um, added on as we um, added customers and demand has, has um, been up for plants. That's wild. And you yeah. said that they came over here with like $50 and yeah. they built it into this incredible greenhouse that serves all the plant people of America. Yeah, <laughs> they came like. over with $50 and two kids and now they, and then they had six kids mm -hmm. and we have, um, all six are still involved in the business. So Abe and Art are our CEOs. Wow. And, um, and then the brothers, they're uh, our VP of operations and then logistics. So, wow, so it's um, like still, still entirely. very, yeah, still very family owned and, um, day to, and they're very involved in the day to day. That's amazing. Something yeah. that I feel like I recently realized when I was meeting a lot of growers at Cultivate was there are so many family owned greenhouses and the families take such pride in the generation to generation and the steady growth of it. And um, there's just such heart behind these plants that we buy that I kind of had no idea about. Yeah, it's amazing just to, to see what all goes in, you know, behind it. So mm -hmm. Dr. Mark will take us through the trial garden, but yeah. to meet our growers too and know that, um, you know, you have to love it to work here and you have to love it to work in the industry. Mm -hmm. We work hard and um, so our passion really fuels what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. I love that. Where are we, Dr. Mark? Will you tell us a little bit about this um, um, unbelievable <laughs> garden that I want to spend every day in? <laughs> so this trial garden um, was actually started probably like 30 years ago. It, um, originally it started like 10 plants along the driveway and it's kind of grown to, right now I think we have about 2,400 plants out here. Mm -hmm. So every year we go out to all the different plant breeders and we say, hey, send us your latest and greatest new stuff. And we put it out here and we see how it does in our conditions. We're able to propagate plants from two sources, from seeds or from cuttings. Okay. Lots of house plants are from cuttings, but right now we're in our seed bowl. Okay. And, and, and it's so cold in here. It's very nice. Very nice and cold in here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and at any given point, we can have two to three million dollars worth of seeds just right in here. So it's, it's pretty cool. Oh my god. Seeds range in size from skinny to right. um, you know, much larger, like the sunflower. Yeah. Seeds. Flower, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if Mark, have any examples. Can we go in? Yeah. Is it a million dollar ball? Each seat is 10 cents. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Don't try to be like 3 cents. Talk it back, talk it back. Don't trust me with anything expensive. Okay. So these go to Viola. Okay. So we'll plant these. Five weeks later, they'll be ready to plant in the bigger pot. Mm -hmm. And then maybe five to six weeks later, we'll be able to ship them to the consumers. Wow. We'll be able to plant them in the fall and then enjoy them for the next year. Okay. Well, not in the journey. Yeah, and next Mark, what's the difference in the seeds? So some of the seeds are so, so tiny. Mm -hmm. they, um, some of these puddings are, um, the one I know they use, uh, the same pudding used for M&M's. Okay. They use that to coat the outside of the seed. Just to make it bigger? Yeah, so, so that's the it's, only reason. And then you can see it better and it's easier to put oh. it on out. So then when you plant it, the outer coating just kind of like yep. melts away right. with the first wash. Because I noticed, I planted, I think, so. uh oh, I dropped, oh no, oh, my God. God. <laughs> Um, I remember, I remember seeing that and they were like pink and they looked candy coated, my strawberries. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what's going on here? Yeah, so what we can do better. Yeah. Um, so from the seeds, what we do is we take trays and we'll run this through. 
unfortunately it's not running today. But that will get filled with soil. Okay. And then it goes all the way through. So this is entirely automated. So the machine puts all of the seeds in those little, see, I, like this looks like it's perfectly, or, it perfectly matches that crate that starts it, off. Yep. So yeah. Like oh yeah, so this tray. And so does this like pack the tray it, it in? It puts a little dibble so the seed goes so towards the, the middle. Goes in. And how many seeds go in each little guy? Um, one to two, and to the three. And the machine is specialized enough that it can actually suck up only two yeah, seeds. You can't even see it, but there's like little seeds in there. Uh-huh. Oh my god. Like seeds in there. This is incredible technology. Wow. Okay. Cool. So a lot of plants do cultivate some little cuttings. Okay. So these plants started in Florida. Okay. Probably, um, maybe Monday. Someone took a cutting, stripped them up to us. So all you have to do is... Thirty cents. Just this little bag. Okay, ready? You're so calm. This is stressful. There we go. Okay, so we're standing by Dr. Mark. Pride and joy. The big pile of dirt. So, so tell us about this dirt. So this started at a sawmill up uh, about maybe 20 minutes away, and this used to be just like a waste stream. You know, they would either like burn this or throw it away. Okay. We're able to take this now and use it in our potting mix. So we mix, um, this is like sawdust, we mix it with peat moss and add a little bit of fertilizer. And it's good to grow, to grow all the millions of plants you've seen here. And the peat moss is all sustainably harvested from Canada, right? Yeah, yeah they harvest it up from Canada. They only take a little bit, like a quarter inch every year. Wow. And then bring it down here and there's like more growing as fast as they're taking it. Okay, so because, and is that just just th those three components are what yep. you grow everything yep. in. Wow, That's so it. sawdust, peat moss, and what would you um, We do use some perlite for propagation. Perlite. Okay, so Dr. Mark, how many poinsettias, is it poinsettia or poinsettia? I've heard it in a couple Okay, ways. great, so yeah. you decide, plant friends. But um, how many do you guys grow and sell in the holiday season? So we sell about two million poinsettias every year. That's crazy, and how many varieties? Uh, probably, I think we're up to about five. five a lot varieties. of red. A lot of red right. is most popular, okay. and then white is the next one. Okay, so we are in this entire greenhouse is all poinsettia poinsettias, and show us um, how like the lifespan of one. So you so, pulled one from over there. So these plants we just stuck um, Here, probably um, two days ago. So no roots. Four weeks later. They'll be yeah, rooted out. You Ooh, can see all the roots. Four weeks later. That's a really quick. And then this plant, stage. we've already put a pinch on it. So it okay. grew up to here, and then we put a pinch so it'll start branching. Okay. And then. And then. It starts looking like that. How long does it take to get like this? So probably after Thanksgiving, this thing will be about this tall, full of blooms, bright red plant. And ready so to go. is this thing three of these? One, yep, two, three? Absolutely. Okay, so it'll keep growing. And do you keep, keep pinching it back? As we it just grows? actually, we only have to do the one pinch. Okay. It's pretty cool. And then, as you notice, this is still green. So when do they turn that famous holiday red that we see? So in um, North Carolina, it's like September 20th is when mm -hmm. the day lengths get short enough. Okay. And then it starts going from a green plant to a red plant. Very cool. And so the whole life cycle starts, I mean, it's August right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> so August through November yeah, for so, starting to sell so like June, Yeah, June wow. to November. It's a lot of heart, plant mm -hmm. friends. It's a lot of time and heart and science into it. Very cool. Look at these adorable little robo gardeners everywhere. Do you see? Look how cute he is. Hello, my little gardener friend. So. <laughs> Look at him go. That's adorable. So Dr. Mark, what are these guys doing? So we want the plants to be nice and round. So we start them up really close together so they get started. And then when we're ready to finish them, we put them in these wider spaces. Okay. So these things will grow and fill that whole space. We're going two types of squares. So we want nice, beautiful round plants. So the robots are actually placing them. So some of them perfect, have in the perfect so Mariah, I feel like sometimes with these robots and with the idea of automating gardening, people, it's coming for you, be yeah. careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, so what's the intention with bringing, oh my God, we're, no, gonna, no. Yeah, we're gonna get taken out. <laughs> you wanna be this dog down there? Oh my God.
my god! <laughs> <laughs> He's eating! He's eating! Yeah. He's like, wait a minute, wait a minute! Come back! Okay, we'll do it back. Okay, let's do that. That was hilarious. So, you're automating parts of the system here. Now, what are you trying to automate? Because people could argue that you're taking jobs away from people. Yes, and yeah. that is not what we're trying to do. Uh -huh. Our goal in automation Some is to um, automate the jobs that are less appealing for people. So it's very difficult to bend over and space these accurately and precisely. Uh -huh. So that is our goal. Is to, I couldn't um, stand here in the sun. It's no. 100 degrees yes, right now. The sun and then to bend yeah. over and... You're eliminating the work that humans shouldn't be doing. That people don't want Creating to do. more jobs for yes. humans that Absolutely. they shouldn't be doing. All right, cool. I'm into that. I'm into these robots. So this might not seem like a very uh, visually wonderful place for us to be standing here, but I'd love for you to tell us why this pile of plastic is so important to Metrolina. Yes, so we are um, really, we really care about the earth and saving plastic from, from um, waste land. So over the last five years, we've launched a recycling initiative and have recycled over 12 million pounds of plastic through reuse or recycling. So we've moved up with recyclers that will take this back and we'll, um, we'll clean it and use it in painters uh, oftentimes. Um, and our goal is to avoid closed loop recycling so that they can turn it back into pots. And you were saying that consumers can actually bring the pots back yes. or that the people, uh, the big box storage you sell, so you can actually return the pots back to you and you will continue recycling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, any of your pots, any of the trays that come back, um, you know, that's what we reuse. And then the pots, we will, um, that's what we send up to recycling. That's so cool. So you're recycling plastic, you're conserving water and energy as well? Energy, yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Mark and Mariah, for giving us an unbelievable behind the scenes treat and tour of Metro. So if we are interested in buying some plants from you guys, where should we find your plants? Yeah, so you can find our plants at um, Lowe's, Home Depot, and Walmart all okay. across the East Coast. Uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, and Walmart on the East Coast. Yeah. And if you guys are interested in learning more about Metrolina Greenhouse and the amazing operation they've got going on here in North Carolina, you can check it, the links in the show notes. So until next time, plant friends, keep, keep blooming, blooming and, and keep, keep growing. growing. Hey plant friends, if you like this video, make sure that you subscribe below. Also, check out my podcast, Blue.